Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Co-Director at the LA County USC Medical Center in Los Angeles, California, and welcome to SoundBytes. Welcome back to SoundBytes Ultrasound. In this module, we'll learn the focused ultrasound evaluation of the leg for deep venous thrombosis. Now, I've divided this module up into parts one and two. In this module, entitled DVT Ultrasound Part 1, we'll first of all learn the normal anatomy of the leg veins integral to performance of the DVT ultrasound examination. We'll then move on to learn the normal compression exam of the leg veins and how to interpret normal findings on the bedside DVT examination. Specifically in this module, we're going to concentrate on the focused DVT examination. The focused or limited DVT exam allows for increased speed in the performance of the examination. We'll concentrate on two specific areas of the leg, looking at the femoral region and the popliteal region. This limited examination also maintains excellent sensitivity in the detection of proximal DVTs. And in fact, most radiology performed DVT examinations screen only down to the popliteal vessels. The calf vein exam is not routinely performed as part of most radiology performed DVT examinations, and indeed in the focused DVT examinations will skip the examination of the calf veins. That leads us into the concept of the focused DVT exam as being an optimal means for evaluation for DVT at the bedside. In the focused DVT exam, we'll begin by examining the femoral vein starting high at the level of the proximal common femoral artery and vein just below the inguinal ligament. We'll continue the exam of the femoral vein down about four to five centimeters through to bifurcation of the vein into the deep and superficial femoral veins. We'll then turn to examination of the popliteal vein, placing the probe high within the popliteal fossa. We'll examine the popliteal vein about four centimeters within the popliteal fossa, continuing the exam of the popliteal vein down to trifurcation of the vessel into the calf veins. Let's now review the lower extremity venous anatomy integral to performance of the focused DVT examination. We begin by identifying the common femoral vein seen here just below the inguinal ligament. Notice that the common femoral vein is seen just medial to the common femoral artery. Now the common femoral vein continues down the leg to bifurcate into the deep and superficial femoral veins. We note here the deep femoral vein coursing to the back of the leg and we note the adjacent deep femoral artery. We also see here the saphenous vein, which joins into the common femoral vein above the level of bifurcation. Now it's important to realize that the superficial femoral vein is the vein that actually continues down the leg to become the popliteal vein behind the knee. And we note the superficial femoral vein coursing down the leg and accompanied by the paired superficial femoral artery. Behind the knee, that superficial femoral vein will become the popliteal vein, and we see the adjacent popliteal artery. Now at the level of trifurcation, the popliteal vein will become three different calf veins, and we note here the anterior tibial vein that's going to course anteriorly onto the calf, the posterior tibial vein seen posteriorly in the calf, and also the perineal vein seen to the lateral aspect of the calf. And it's because these calf veins are so small that it's difficult to see them on bedside ultrasonography. Let's now watch a video and learn how to perform the ultrasound examination looking for a DVT within the femoral vein system. We begin by placing the high frequency linear array type probe. It's the same probe that you'll be using for vascular access in a side to side orientation over the common femoral vein and artery just below the inguinal ligament. Notice that we're compressing down with the probe and essentially the DVT exam is a compression exam as a normal vein will completely close with pressure down with the probe. Notice that we're sequentially compressing at different levels along the common femoral vein, compressing from the beginning at the top just below the inguinal ligament all the way down through bifurcation into the superficial and deep femoral vessels. Now a clot will not completely compress with pressure down with the probe and thus will be identified on bedside examination. Notice here it's standard to have the marker on the probe going lateral so that we know where we are with regard to the orientation of the probe versus the screen. 
It's best to position our patient slightly upright to distend the femoral vessels for the DVT exam. And as shown in this video, we actually had the patient with the head of the bed up about 30 degrees. We also want to have the leg slightly externally rotated to best orient so that we can place the probe directly over the common femoral artery and vein. Here we see the ultrasound findings that will occur when placing the probe as shown in the illustration towards the left. Note here the probe is placed with the marker dot laterally just inferior to the inguinal ligament over the common femoral artery and vein as shown in the pictorial towards the right. Notice here that the common femoral vein will be seen medial to the common femoral artery and because we have the marker dot oriented laterally or towards the left of the image, the common femoral vein will be seen to the right here. Here's a video showing the actual ultrasound findings of the common femoral artery and vein using color flow Doppler. We orient ourselves to the image to the left here, showing that the common femoral vein will be seen medial to the common femoral artery, and we note the ultrasound findings to the right, showing pulsatile flow within the common femoral artery, located just lateral to the common femoral vein, and we see the phasic hum of the blood flow within the common femoral vein seen medial to the artery here. While it's very nice to have color flow Doppler to differentiate the common femoral artery from the common femoral vein, we can also discern the two using grayscale or B-mode sonography as shown in the video clip here to the right. Here we note the common femoral artery to the left or lateral to the common femoral vein as shown medially. Notice that the common femoral artery has more hypertrophic walls and also pulsatile flow within it, differentiating it from the common femoral vein as seen medially. Continuing down the leg, as shown in the probe position in the illustration to the left here, we see the following ultrasound findings in the illustration to the right. We note that the femoral arteries bifurcate at a level above the common femoral vein, and here we see the superficial and deep femoral arteries in a location just lateral to the common femoral vein. We also see a very important landmark, the saphenous vein, joining into the common femoral vein at this level. It's very important to visualize the saphenous vein as it's really the only superficial vein in the body that we worry about clot formation within as it goes directly into the common femoral vein and can propagate up into the IVC and into the heart. Here we see a video clip using color flow Doppler demonstrating the bifurcation of the femoral artery into the superficial and deep femoral arteries. And here we see that bifurcation point right there. Notice that the femoral arteries are located laterally or towards the left of the common femoral vein which we see located medially or towards the right of the image. In this video clip, we'll note the bifurcation of the common femoral artery into superficial and profundus femoral arteries using grayscale or B-mode sonography. We note the common femoral vein is shown towards the medial aspect of the image or towards the right, and here again we see that bifurcation point of the common femoral artery into the superficial and profundus femoral arteries as labeled there. And we just remember that point that the artery generally bifurcates at a level higher than the femoral vein. In this video clip, we're able to get a good look at the saphenous vein joining into the common femoral vein, and we see the common femoral vein located medial to the common femoral artery. Note that the saphenous vein has the look often of a little hat on top of the common femoral vein. And we note here also the turbulent flow of blood here within the common femoral vein as this was taken in a hypotensive patient. Now let's turn our attention to the anatomy of the popliteal fossa. We note here the popliteal vein and the popliteal artery. Remember that the popliteal vein is going to be in an orientation located more posterior to the popliteal artery, which will be located more anterior. Here's how to perform the focus DVT ultrasound exam looking into the popliteal fossa. It's best to have the patient sitting up to further distend the popliteal vein, and I like to have the patient sitting up with the leg dangling over the bed. I can then pull up a chair and move anterior to the patient. We'll place the high-frequency linear array probe high within the popliteal fossa, sequentially compressing it levels down all the way down to trifurcation. Notice that we're using our other hand to stabilize the anterior knee as we press with the probe posteriorly. So again, we'll start high within that popliteal fossa, compressing sequentially all the way through the levels of the popliteal artery and vein, down inferior there, all the way down to trifurcation. Here's the anatomy that we'll see with the probe placed as shown in the illustration to the left. Notice that the probe is placed into the posterior aspect of the knee behind the popliteal fossa, again with the marker dot oriented laterally.
Thus, we'll see the following images as shown in the illustration to the right. Note that the popliteal vein will be located closer to the probe or posterior to the popliteal artery, which will be further away from the probe or more anteriorly located as shown in this image. In this image, we'll use color flow Doppler to further differentiate the popliteal artery from the popliteal vein. And in the video clip here to the right, we can see the pulsatile flow of blood within the popliteal artery as seen anterior or further away from the probe than the popliteal vein, which is seen more posterior than the artery here. Notice that we see a little bit of phasic flow of blood within the popliteal vein. This video clip employs B-mode or grayscale sonography to show the popliteal vein and popliteal artery. Again, we can see the popliteal artery located more anterior than the popliteal vein, and we can see the pulsatile movements of the popliteal artery differentiating it from the vein. And in fact, we can see a little bit of turbulent flow of blood within the popliteal vein here, and located more posteriorly than the popliteal artery. When performing the focused lower extremity DVT ultrasound examination, we want to first identify the femoral and popliteal arteries and veins using B-mode or grayscale sonography. Now, color flow Doppler ultrasound can be helpful in differentiating the artery from the vessel and also making sure that you're looking at vascular structures, but it's not essential. Most of our information will actually come from B-mode sonography. We want to apply compression to the vein, pressing down with the probe in the short axis or transverse orientation. In a normal examination, the walls of the vein will completely touch together. Conversely, if a DVT is present, the walls of the vein will not completely touch together as a thrombus within the lumen of the vein will prevent the walls from completely collapsing. Here we see normal compression of the common femoral vein and we see here the common femoral vein to the right of the common femoral artery which we see to the left. Note we're looking in the short axis or transverse orientation, pressing down with the probe, and note with pressure down on the probe that the common femoral vein completely collapses and that the walls, the anterior wall and posterior wall of the vessel, meet. We also see compression of the saphenous vein, that little cap on the top of the common femoral vein. So a completely normal exam of the common femoral vein at the level just below the inguinal ligament. Here we're looking a little bit more distally at the common femoral vein at the level of the bifurcation of the common femoral artery into superficial and profundus femoral arteries. And we note here complete compression of the vein as we push down with the probe. And note again that the anterior and posterior walls completely meet together. Now let's move down the leg to look at the normal compression exam of the popliteal vein. Recall that the popliteal vein is going to be seen towards the posterior aspect of the image or closer to the top of the image here than the popliteal artery. As we press down, we note complete compression of the popliteal vein and we see here that the artery still stays open. So again, this would be a normal compression exam of the popliteal vein with the anterior and posterior walls of the vessel completely touching down with probe pressure. In conclusion, thank you for joining me for this SoundBites module going over bedside DVT examination part one. Hopefully now you understand the focus DVT exam which allows for increased speed with excellent accuracy in the exam performance. In this module part one, we focused on the basic anatomy and the normal examination for the DVT evaluation. For a normal examination, we hope that the femoral and popliteal veins will completely compress down with probe pressure. Unfortunately, a venous thrombosis will prevent the vein from closing, and so we'll return in part two going over the positive examination and those findings that you might encounter on the focused bedside DVT examination. So I hope to see you in the future as SoundBites continues.